It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So the Holy Spirit helps. Amen. Nothing wrong with you saying what? Holy Spirit, I need some help. Right? Here he says he helps us to pray supernaturally. Amen. He helps us to pray supernaturally beyond your intellect. Amen. But there, then he says the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Now, look at that word intercession just for a second, because the Holy Spirit, one of the words for paraclete is he's our intercessor. All right. So, Rick, God bless Rick, wherever he is right now, but he gave us this definition of intercessor. You ready for this? So, he said this Greek word for intercessor is the picture of someone who has fallen into a pit by which there is no way they can escape. The intercessor is the one who comes along and finds you in that pit. The intercessor is the picture of the one who jumps in the pit with you and pulls you out of the pit. Let's say it this way. The Holy Spirit has pit experience. So no matter how bad the pit is, come on, no matter how long you've been in the pit, no matter how hopeless it may look, no matter how bad the struggle may be, the Holy Spirit comes along and says, hey, and he doesn't just stay on the side of the pit and tell you to jump higher. Try harder. No, the intercessor jumps in the pit with you, shares your feelings, Come on, he knows how you feel. He knows what you're going through. Come on. And he's in that pit with you, in the situation with you, and then what? He's going to pull you out of that pit. So no matter what situation you're in, you struggle with depression, shame, come on, uh, an impossible situation, the Holy Spirit jumps in the middle of that situation with you and says, you don't have to stay there. This is not the end for you. I'm going to pull you out of this situation. Amen. So when you recognize him or yield to him, the Holy Spirit, there's the intercessor. He's the picture of a first responder. Aha. So a first responder is what? Somebody who shows up on a tragedy. Come on and knows exactly what to do to take things that are out of order and bring them back into order. Come on, this morning I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit is in the middle of your situation, helping you right now where you are, pulling you out of that situation, taking things that are out of order, bringing it back into order. You ought to just say, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. You're not alone. You're not on your own. Come on. The Holy Spirit. Come on. He's your helper, your strengthener, your intercessor, your advocate. You'll stand by. He's the greater one. He's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Let's try that again. I said he's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, and he dwells on the inside of you. Well, he'll quicken. Come on, your body. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You cannot get a sad anointing. The Holy Spirit, that anointing is called the oil of joy. 
Amen. And the psalmist said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Some of y'all need an oil change today, I can tell by looking at you. You need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on, just thank God for the Holy Spirit. Now acknowledge who he is. Come on. Acknowledge who he is. He's the greater one. He's my helper. He's my strengthener. Come on, how in the world could you lose with the Spirit of God living on the inside of you? Rising up on the inside of you. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything else if you don't get happy about what I already told you. <laughs> Come on, the Holy Spirit will think through your mind. Change your personality. Look at somebody next to you and say, you might consider that. The Holy Spirit change your personality. Put victory in your voice. Come on, get the look on your face like the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. Change your countenance. Amen. So when Paul happens to mention this facet of the Holy Ghost, he calls it joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, the book of Philippians, the apostle Paul mentions the word joy and rejoice 16 times. Philippians 4, 4, the apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So if anybody asks you what time it is, you go, it's a good time to rejoice. Right now. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. So I had this preacher tell me, he said, uh, well, what's the Greek word there? And I said, you're not even doing the English word yet. Why are you worried about the Greek word? <laughs> the Holy Spirit will have you rejoicing at the most unusual time. You'll even try to tell him this is not a good time. Dad Hagen said, in this move of the Holy Spirit, I, uh, joy will be an unusual characteristic of this move of the Holy Spirit. He said, and when this anointing is in full manifestation, you know, the Bible says in the Old Testament, the glory of God fill the house. Yeah. Glory. Everybody say glory. glory. First Peter chapter 1 verse 8 says, yet believing... We got any believers in here? Yeah. Come on, 1 Peter 1, 8 says, Yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. A lot of times people say, well, don't you know I'm believing? Don't tell me I'm not believing, I'm believing right now. All right, go back to 1 Peter 1, 8. Yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable. But wait, he said that joy is full of glory. All right, let's say it this way. That joy is a supernatural joy that ushers in the glory of God. It's a container for the glory of God. What is the glory? The glory is God's manifested presence. The difference between omnipresent and glory is manifested presence. By manifested presence, that means you experience his presence. That means I got it in my hands, got it in my feet, got it in my, come on. On the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, they had fire on their head on the day of Pentecost. 
You cannot have fire on your head and act normal. Come on. When you have an experience, <laughs> when you have an experience with the Holy Ghost, yeah, I got fire on my head. <laughs> That fire strategically placed on your head. Come on, it'll burn the stuff off of you that the enemy's been trying to put on you. And that fire will ignite the gift of God and the calling of God on the inside of you. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of you. Come on, that means light it back up. Come on, get it back on fire. Some of y'all need to get relit this morning with a fresh fire of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. So write this down. I know you know some of these things. C.S. Lewis said, you can't say it any better than he said it, so I'm just going to tell you what he said. He said, joy is the serious business of heaven. Joy is the serious business of heaven. One more time for those. Joy is the serious business of heaven. All right, let's add this. Joy is serious business. Our joy is the serious business of heaven. That means in an atmosphere of joy, heaven takes care of some serious business. You might want to tell the person next to you, say, um, excuse me, but I need to take care of some serious business today. Let's try it again. I need to take care of some serious business today. I don't really want to scare you. I don't want to offend you, but I'm going to have to get real happy here in just a minute. And while I'm rejoicing, <laughs> while I'm rejoicing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Dad Hagen had uh, 15 years of what we call Holy Ghost meetings, and I went to a bunch of them. Well, I wasn't, they weren't really unusual to me because I grew up in my mom and dad's church in South Texas, and there were times, not all the time, but times when the Holy Spirit would begin to move. Amen? Amen. You didn't know when. You couldn't put it in the bulletin. You couldn't invite a friend and ask for a dignified service? How many of you have invited a friend and say, Lord, please, we want to have a dignified service here. I've got one of my friends here. So I grew up in that atmosphere. My mother was the first responder. So we'd be worshiping the Lord and my mother would start praising the Lord and she was not really reserved. She would just praise the Lord, lift her hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Even if you thought nothing was happening, my mama would say something's happening. So she'd praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then sometimes Holy Spirit would start to move and someone would give a message in other tongues. This, this woman, her name is Sister Evans, and she's an old woman, and she had false teeth. So if you, if you did not have the interpretation, uh, you knew Morse code, you could figure out what the Holy Ghost was saying because her teeth would click and clack together when she would pray in the Holy Ghost. So Sister Evans did her thing. Right? I'm kind of a kid growing up this, and my mama goes, hallelujah. Got a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then she would shout and go, whoa, thank you, Jesus. And then she would take off and run around the church. Well, a friend of mine came to church, and I had prayed that this would not happen. (laughs) 
My friend said, what is that language they're speaking? And he says, that Latin? I said, no, we're not Catholic. <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. Then my mother goes, whoo, and she takes off running around the church. And my friend says, who is that woman? <laughs> I said, I have no idea who this woman is. I was so ashamed that it was my mother being so demonstrative, rejoicing, and running around the church. If that was the end of it, that would be fine, but that was not the end of it. So my mother would go, whoa, and she would go run around the church. People would ask my daddy, they'd say, why does your wife run around the church? My daddy would say, go ask her. <laughs> then my daddy would say, some of you think that is not necessary. And it is not necessary unless it is necessary. <laughs> so while they're trying to figure that out, my mother would finish running because a lot of people say, you know, so many people think they know what's necessary and they think they know what's not necessary. But if God said you need to count it all joy when you're going through adversity, then it must be necessary for you to go ahead and rejoice. Come on now. <laughs> the Lord told me one time, he said, if you only knew what happens in the spirit when you rejoice, you would rejoice every day. Come on, your joy. Come on, your joy. Your joy, your joy is a demonstration of the triumph of Christ. Come on, your joy, your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. In other words, how would you act if you believe God is working on your situation? You would just go ahead and praise the Lord and rejoice. All right, I said that now. So my mama, she'd run. The reason my daddy would say, go ask her, was because my mom, when my mom and dad first started pastoring in a little town called West Columbia, Texas. Anybody know where West Columbia, Texas is? It's one mile west of East Columbia. It's down <laughs> south, Texas. It's a little town of 3,000 people. That's where I was born. That's where I was raised. That's where my dad pastored, West Columbia, Texas. It was such a small town, they had to put a mirror at the end of town to make it look bigger. <laughs> it was such a small town, the welcome and y'all come back sign was on the same pole. It was such a small town, there was only two restaurants in town, and whichever one you ate at, you wish you would have eaten at the other one. It was such a small town. Such a small town, they had a beauty contest and nobody won. So this is a small town. <laughs> but when my mom and dad first moved there, they were the pastor of that church, very, very small church. And my dad had a heart attack. My mama had a nervous breakdown. Imagine, she's the pastor's wife, and she lived in the back bedroom in darkness most of the time because of depression or shame, things that had happened to her that no one knew. And so she struggled and struggled with that, and she stayed in the back bedroom and didn't have any money. But somebody came and gave us the word of faith, which we call the authority of the believer. So in the middle of that disaster, then my mother started speaking the word. 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. But my mother's favorite Psalm, Psalms 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Let's try that one more time. Somebody said, I know that verse. 
But the authority of the believer means you say it. You say it. So she kept saying, the Lord is my life, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And the power of God came down into that bedroom, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and delivered her from depression and brought her out of a horrible pit. Come on, look like there's no way out. She came out of that pit, changed her life. So when she would come to church and thank the Lord. Yeah. If you knew the pit she came out of, you'd know why she prays the way she prays. Are y'all here? I said, if you knew the pit she came out of, Come on, you might want to tell somebody around you, if you knew where I came from, you'd know why I praise like this, why I shout like this, why I laugh like this. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Do you ever feel weak in your life? have so many problems around you that you feel like things will never change. We have good news. The Holy Spirit takes what Jesus has done for us and makes it a reality in us. The way you yield to the Holy Spirit is the same way you yield to all the will of God. God doesn't just want to clean you up. He wants to fill you up. When you order the Holy Spirit package, you get our brand new book, The Holy Spirit is a Genius. If you listen to him, he'll make you look smart. Plus the four CD set, The Holy Spirit, My Best Friend. When the Holy Spirit is working on your case, you have a tremendous advantage. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you'll receive the book, The Holy Spirit is a Genius, and the set of four CDs, The Holy Spirit, My Best Friend. You can also download the MP3s of these messages in our app for free. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's message on the Holy Spirit. I love this teaching on the Holy Spirit because a lot of times the Holy Spirit is a mystery to people, right? They don't really understand what the Holy Spirit does, who He is, what He can do. He's more than just the Holy Spirit, but He is our friend, He's our comforter, He's our standby, He's our advocate, He's our helper. And my dad has this new book, it's called The Holy Spirit is a Genius. If you listen to him, he'll make you look smart. I wanna read this quote to you real quick from his book. It is amazing, it talks about the Holy Spirit and it says, he is called in to render service. He is called in to help in a situation with which a man by himself cannot cope. He will keep a man on his feet when left to himself, he would collapse. The Holy Spirit enables him to pass the breaking point and not break. Man, that is powerful. If you've ever faced a difficult situation where you felt like, I just can't take it anymore. I just can't do this anymore. You may find yourself in a pit of discouragement or a pit where you just feel like it's just, there's no more hope. I don't know what else I can do. I've tried everything. The Holy Spirit is there. He is your friend. He's never leaving. And He will get into that pit with you and He will pull you out. That's what the help of the Holy Spirit does. You can pass beyond the breaking point, but not break with the help of the Holy Spirit. I want you to get this book today. It's gonna help you. In good times and in bad times, the Holy Spirit is there. He will help you, encourage you. He will strengthen you. He'll stand by you. He'll be your very best friend. Get this book today. You can go to markhankins.org or call the number on the screen. Until next time, I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. 
Mark and Trina have taken the gospel of Christ and the word of faith to many nations for over 50 years with this mandate. Their desire is to train and equip believers in the U.S. and around the world with the in Christ message, the spirit of faith and the move of the Holy Spirit. They do this primarily at leadership conferences, church services, and Bible school. When leaders are impacted, they are able to take the same message and anointing back to their churches and ministries in remote areas. Many of these countries they have gone to multiple times and continue to build on the work they are doing. Because of this, another major part of the ministry is the translation and distribution of our books. Dad Hagen said, the greatest distribution of the gospel in the end times will be the printed page. The amazing thing is our books go places we may never go and reach people that we may never know. Right now, we have over 40 books that have been translated in many different languages. We are believing for our books to be translated into 100 different languages. Another major assignment of Mark Hankins Ministries is our daily television program. The television program has expanded the reach of the word tremendously. Every day, we are able to come into people's homes and teach the word to people of all ages, denominations, and walks of life. We are amazed at the testimonies we receive from people who watch the television program and have been healed, set free, and set on fire with the word. The influence of the television program continues to grow, and the program now has the potential to reach over 80 million homes with the life-changing word of God. We recently completed the construction of our new conference center at our ministry headquarters. We like to see this facility as a distribution center for the gospel. We host many multiple day conferences every year and it houses our new television studio. The studio allows us to pipe out the word to more people than ever before. Now is not the time to slow down, but we believe there is an acceleration of the assignment to reach more people more languages, and more nations with the gospel of Jesus. We want to thank our faithful World Missions partners. Your gifts, large and small, all join together and make a huge impact for the kingdom of God, not only here in the U.S., but also around the world. If you could see all the faces of people reached and how their lives are transformed, you would see how their spirits are encouraged and set on fire. Each individual represents a unique story of redemption and restoration in the Lord Jesus Christ, a testament to the unfailing love of our Heavenly Father. Together, let us continue to use every avenue possible to take the life-changing gospel and word of faith to as many people and to as many nations. Remember, together we can, together we will. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.